So, Devils, you know, back to answer some more goddamn questions. Questions we're going over today are on the video I did bring this shit up two weeks ago. Cannibal Corpse, Broken Hope, and Immolation are not brutal death metal, question mark. Oh, yeah, these fucking clown boys. Let's see what the fuck they have to say for themselves. 1.1k views, comments 125. So let's see what the fuck's in here. Scrolling to the first goddamn question mark. Uh, Manage Pro. I have a question. Is there any movies with death metal music that do not star Jim Carrey? <laughs> Well, in other words, is there any other movie that stars death metal that doesn't have um, that, that 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 other than the only one that I know of, Ace Ventura, uh, Cannibal Corpse, in there? The only thing I can think of closest is uh, in the show Criminal Minds. They're playing Toxic Holocaust in the background. Um, I think it's funny too because uh, in the in the scene, it's a guy. He's like. Uh, I don't remember if he was like a boxer or whatever. He's going to the gym and shit like that, but he's a killer, right? They're playing Toxic Holocaust in the background. I think something from Chemistry of Consciousness, and he's taking a shot of fucking testosterone or other steroids or whatever. So I thought that was pretty fucking funny. Uh, but that was so, like, real metal shit that I like. Toxic Holocaust was in Criminal Minds, but not <clears throat> the band. It's just the, new, the overplay music was in there. In that one scene. Um, Cannibal Corpse and Ace Ventura. No, I mean, obviously there's like Rob's, was it White Zombie or whatever, and Airheads or some shit. I remember seeing that as a kid. I don't count. That's just commercial. But I mean, music. At that time, that was considered, I mean, White Zombie was popular, but um, all the kind of like the, see, White Zombie didn't bother me so much, maybe because I actually kind of enjoy some songs, even though it's kind of um, uh, really, really commercial music. But um, on the that Le Sexer Sisto album, I actually did enjoy a few songs. It just gets really fucking boring. But uh, what the first song, Welcome to Planet Motherfucker, I thought that was a pretty good, like, kind of just Black Sabbath influence but with Halloween overtone themes. With that. I mean, so it has some good songs, but the record gets boring. Then the Astro Creep album I thought was kind of original and has some songs on there as well. But that's total commercial music that um, that stuff didn't bother me. Once he did the Rob Zombie stuff, there was too much of the oomsh, 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 hip-hop fucking crap going on, but, you know, early White Zombie doesn't bother me, the the really, really early White Zombie albums, I remember, uh, I think it was Eric or Chase that picked them up when we were kids, you know, we're young, young, just getting the metal, and you're checking everything out of the sun, and they picked it up as an import, the Psycho Soul, I think it was called, and even Chase is like, dude, it sounds like a fucking drunk guy, I was just like, dude, this shit is fucking horrible, and uh, I remember going back in my adult years, like, I think even Craig put it out. He's loving it. I was like, dude, this shit is so goddamn bad. Um, you put out, it's, it's, it's almost so bad that it's almost good because you're laughing. It's like, dude, this fuck is horrible. The 80s all white zombie shit that a lot of the fucking white zombie posers, because there's white zombie posers out there. They just think fucking Astro Creep and the uh, Rob Zombie stuff. They don't even know about the uh, 80s stuff. Um, if you're they're a true fucking fan, if they collect records and music and shit like that, they would they would at least know about it. But a lot of them don't. At least the, the ones in the '90s, because obviously the white zombie shit that spilled over to um that and that, and understandably so that is for fans of like Pantera, Cold Chamber, Mushroom Head, uh, Marilyn Manson, all that stuff. So well, they liked white zombie. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's for that crowd base. No, in your lane, no problem with that. No problems, bra bra. Exhume gore metal. The fuck? Not that they ever claimed to like that, but they were coming up to me while I'm wearing a goddamn shirt, you know what I mean? So, um, that was the only other band that I could see in, uh, in a movie that I thought was, like, of that time remotely, like, whoa, kind of surprised, because, again, like, yeah, now, yeah, Rob Zombie and shit's huge, but that movie was in the 90s, and, uh, that was still even, like, as much as I dislike Marilyn Manson and shit, that was considered... But the grandmas, the nannies, the fucking mommies, daddies, shit, it's kind of taboo. I mean, they this is the evil satanic shit. They didn't want their kids into it. And then I, you know, now, fucking literally, I know fucking uh, just like grown ass, like six year old men. You, know, they, they play, they, you can hear Marilyn Manson on the radio, literally. Uh, it's just played as with classic rock. And they don't give a fuck. You know, nobody cares. Uh, but back then, it was considered kind of extreme, I guess, uh, even though the real devils like us knew that it wasn't. But White Zombie was in that category, too. That's just why I bring it up in that in the movie. But yeah, as far as death metal, like, was no, not that I can think of. I mean, there might, and within reason, too. I know someone's going to put some B-rated bullshit fucking movie that 30 people have seen in there. I mean, but an actual big Hollywood movie. Is there another big Hollywood movie that 
literally came out in the movie theater. If it didn't come out in the theater, it doesn't fucking count. Some bullshit fucking underground thing. Not that it's a bad movie. It's just it wasn't uh, big to the masses. Is there a big ass fucking goddamn uh, Hollywood movie that um, a death metal band played in? Even if it's a, if it's a uh, thrash metal band, if it was Creator or something like that, that that would count. Put it in there. Uh, let me know because I don't know. Uh, Black metal too. Any of that? Uh, like for example, when the the new Scream movie came out. Scream 10 or whatever the fuck it's out. I remember hearing about it, didn't see it. Uh, maybe I'll watch it. I'm kind of slightly curious, I guess. Even though I like the first one, the rest I thought sucked. But eh, I guess I'll maybe check it out if I'm bored and it's on. Um, like a movie like that. Was there, um, was there, I know there's not Death Metal one, and I probably would have heard about it, but I'm just saying something of that caliber. Because I know some wise ass is going to pull out something that's like, dude, that doesn't even fucking count. That's not what we're talking about. That wasn't what the guys at question was. Uh, Goate Tonser, J Dog, what do you think about the bands like Grave and Broken Hope releasing albums in the current hipster age <laughs> that try to capture their early sound? Are you for the old men sounding retro, or would you feel like yelling, Get those grandpas off the stage? <laughs> I'm indifferent, man. It's like if I hear Grave comes, in all honesty, if it was like Grave's coming to Cleveland and it's a Tuesday night, I wouldn't even go. If it was a Friday or Saturday, honestly, if it was them and a, and a bunch of other bands I never heard of or care about opening for them and Grave was the headliner, that was the only band I knew, I probably still want to go. Broken Hope, pretty much the same thing. Um, it's it just, they left, they're back, and honestly, the stuff isn't very that great. I own the uh, first comeback album by Broken Hope, I believe. I remember being decent, but it's, it's no Swamp and Gore. It's no Bottles of Repugnance, you know what I mean? Um I even do like the Loathing album, which was their second to last before uh, leaving. The, uh, yeah, I was weird on Broken Hope. I uh, I liked the first two, Swamp to Gore, Balls Repugnance. I like those. What's the one after that? The third one, the Repulsive, whatever. I think I own a, a reissue LP of it. That one, I, it kind of stinks. Like, n nothing there. Um, just the songs, just, which nothing there. Then I think after that was Loathing, which is, you can tell they're um, changed logo and just a very much more commercial look. But I actually enjoy that record. Then there's Grotesque Blessings. Correct me if I'm fifth grading one, but I think I know the, cat the uh, catalog pretty decently. Grotesque Bl Blessings, that was their last one before they, they abandoned the scene. I remember that one being okay, but just very, very fucking wimpy. And then they came back, and I, I heard the, the first comeback album. I was like, it's decent. It kind of sounds like Broken Hope. Obviously, it doesn't have uh, the original singers. He's not the guy that killed himself. Um, but it's kind of like, eh. I'd have to go back and listen to it. Chances are, I mean, I can't imagine I would love it, uh, to be honest with you. I don't even, I didn't know. I, I'm pretty sure I picked it up, which is, I had, I thought it was good enough at the time, but I can't remember it. Uh, Grave, the only thing I heard since their, their comeback was Into the Grave. I thought it was okay, but kind of like, yes, yeah, so just, just, just some we're back grandpas that it's like, you guys don't have it no more. Honestly, the only, so what I think of when I think of Grave, I think of guys when they were teenagers, they were young, excited. Passionate about fucking underground metal, death metal, you know, thrash metal, the stuff of the scene. They wanted to start their own band. Very, very excited about it. So play their own genre of it. And then as the years go by, life beat them down. Fucking, and they just, just, just burn out. Fucking the, watching the fucking whatever the hell's equivalent to the fat ball game over there, guys, and just, just working a nine to five job, just regular fucking dudes, just burn out, hating life. And uh, let's come back. Let's just because they don't have that spirit. They don't have that oomph. You know what I mean? And a lot of the guys, when you look at the albums, the early albums that have the oomph that actually has some fucking testosterone on it, um, was the early albums when they were fucking kids. Pro probably when they had their, their when their testes were actually producing some fucking tests. So now there's a bunch of fucking uh, geezers with low goddamn tests. That's, that's that's what I. That's literally what I hear when I hear a lot of these come these 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 older bands. I'm like, it's not that it sucks. Well, it kind of does. It's just, it's just more so. It's not that it's that it's not metal. I should say, it's just lame, tame, and it it doesn't. It, it's, it lacks testosterone. That's the best. That's literally the, probably the best thing I come up with. You know, you when you're young, your your natural testosterone levels are the highest, right? That seems like that's what they had, and now that they're 45, 50 years old, they're fine. It's just, they, it's almost like, dude, I, I, you got to get some TRT, blah blah. Yeah, this sounds like some fucking uh, beta soy boys playing this shit. I'm trying to, anyways. That's what it sounds like. That's how it comes off to me. I don't hate it. It's just it's like it's nothing there. It's flat out as tame and boring. Um, that's not just exclusive to Grave and Broken Hope. It's 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 ninety five percent of them. I mean, there's like I said, there's very few. There are some. I mean, you guys know I like the uh, all the Cannibal Corpses, the Deicides, um, 
every immolation, but even immolation for sure. Immolation, like I like the last few albums, but they're nowhere even close to as good as the fucking uh, first like four or five. Uh, in my in my personal opinion, as opposed to like like I said, Deicide Overture's a blast. I fucking loved it. They they had some kind of stinkers in the catalog, uh, in the midway like Till Death Do Us Part. Like, yeah. What the last one they did? I mean, that's been on a very high note in my opinion. Uh, the last Cannibal I thought was very good. Um, not as good as uh, my of all the latest few Cannibals. My favorite so far, let's let's say the last five albums is a Skeletal Domain. That'd be my uh, favorite so far. Really, really, really like that album. Um. So there's exceptions of bands that have been around forever. But yeah, the ones I just fucking mentioned it though, too. Immolation, Cannibal Corpse, you said you noticed too. Whether you like all their albums or not, they never did this we're back shit. Dude, that is a re- I'm telling you right now that when they leave and they come, we're back. That is a big fucking red flag for fucking burnout, not passionate about it. Possibly we're never into it, just we're in it to be rebellious and be cool and, and impress their buds, or just flat out fucking poo. Losers! One of the fucking few. Because why? What do you mean you're? What, what did you leave for? Why else did you fucking leave? If you were truly passionate, and you loved it. Well, where, where, where the fuck did you go for years on it? And then we're back. Because what happened is when they left, they saw. Oh, life sucks. Yeah, just sitting there watching the fat ball game on a Sunday, drinking a Budweiser. This life sucks. This lifestyle sucks too. Going golfing on Saturday morning. This sucks too. Life's boring. I still hate my fucking day job. Life sucks, you know, and they go home in the evenings after my job on board. That's what they see. They see that the grass is not just throwing out examples of what a, a regular life is. Whatever whatever they went to go do after they left, they see, like the old saying, the grass isn't greener on the other side. It all fucking sucks. Just find something you're passionate about and stick with it. Anything's going to get a little fucking uh, monotonous because that's just what you're fucking used to. Grass is never green on the other side. The only time it's green is when you, if you're doing something that's completely just downright ass fucking miserable. Let's, for example, let's just say job wise. Let's say you're uh, you're tarring roads or doing something super fucking physical, manual, and it's beating you down, and you're making like ten bucks an hour. It's like, well, yeah, there's definitely some greener grass in that. You have a, a massively shit fucking laborious, hard as fuck job, and you're making fucking pretty much minimum wage. If, you have, if you're in a scenario like that, yeah, okay, that sucks, man. I admit, the, the grass is like, you can find something a little greener than that. But uh, most of the times, it, it's, yeah, it's usually, it's usually never greener. So um, don't think that your life sucks as bad as it does, but there is exceptions. I see some people's lives like, oh, yeah, that would fucking suck. So kind of, in, in a sense, what you're saying, kind of, yeah, grandpas get off the stage just because they're not into it anyways. Especially, because I said, both those bands you particularly mentioned were back. Biggest fucking red flag. Not a guarantee. They might be the metal, most metal guys in the world. Uh, but if I was a betting man and Vegas was taking bets, 95% of the wear back guys, complete fucking posers. Never run it to begin with. Um, so like I said, enormous motherfucking red flag. For th- those two particular bands, yeah, get off the stage, grandpas. Hang it the fuck up. Uh, Ryan and Zero Two, J Dog Brock, Blasting Conquers of Armageddon. I pictured it, picture vinyl. Fuck yeah, only a hundred made too, bra bra. If well, the Hell's Pressing was only hundred made. Uh, sick as fuck picture vi- vinyl re release. While wow, I'm blown away by by the whole quality, the whole layout and quality. Got that right, bra bra. If you didn't get those first Christians on vinyl, there's only a few left, and I'm not just saying that either. There's literally only a handful left of both. I mean, of all three, missing the fuck out. You, you think Broken Fucking Hope or Grave Guys in the depth? In all honesty, if you like brutal death metal, there's exceptions. I mean, I'm sure there's guys watching, ah, Christian sucks. What do you mean you like the first three Christians? Uh, don't get me wrong. No tons of people. Fucking Don of the Dead pisses on them all fucking day long. But honestly, that guy doesn't like brutal death metal. So his opinion on the topic's kind of irrelevant. But if you like brutal death metal, like we were talking about, and yes, Butchered at Birth and Tomb and be like, my book's fucking brutal metal. Brutal death metal. Swamp to Gore's brutal death metal. Uh, even kind of grave in a sense. It was. It was the more brutal shit for Sweden. Do you ever notice, like, Into the Grave, it's just, it's more brutal than a lot of the, um, I was going it's just a little more darker and brutal than, like, Dismember, for example. I actually like Dismember more, but it's out in the more, a little bit more on the brutal side, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, if you like the more brutal shit, well, yeah, what, what do you mean, like, don't like the first three Christians? So it's kind of like missing the fuck on out is what I'm getting at. Yeah, they were some fucking bangers. 
Very beautiful, beautiful reissue done right. Got that right. I have three three versions of this now. Got that right too. And this by far smokes smokes them all. Sick ass photos. Oh, by the way, the photos in there, those are photos me, Eric, and Chase took on the Conqueror's Armageddon tour. So that was 2001, 16 years old I was. Uh, damn, dude, sick camera work. That was us, brah, brah. Thought it was good to uh, include them. Didn't have them for the others because I never seen them on Apocalypse Revelations and uh, Black Force Domain. And actually, if you guys know, if you're old devils, did Christian ever do a U.S. tour for either one of those, Black Force Domain or Conquerors? I don't even know if they did because when Conquerors came out, that's when they uh, were on Central Media, and that's when they started touring it up all the time. Prior to, right, I wouldn't have seen them because it might have been around 96, 97, right before I started going to shows. 98 is when I started going to shows. Um I would have missed them anyways, but I don't even know if they did a U.S. fucking tour. Maybe they played a Milwaukee Metal Fest or something in like 95. I'm not saying they did. I'm just saying maybe something like that, a one-off. But I don't know if they've done a U.S. tour. So wouldn't have, um, even if I was around at the time, we wouldn't have photos anyways because, to my knowledge, I never played Cleveland or anything during the first two albums. Uh, Human Brisket drove to Austin to see Nunslaughter in 09. Got Kanye to sign by Hex LP. You know, what's funny is um, as long as I've known Jim Kanye and been friends with him and shit like that is I don't have anything signed by him or I don't even have a single photo with him. Uh, it's one of those things, you know, you don't even think to because, I mean, I knew Jim before I even became a Nunslaughter fan, to be completely honest with you. Like, not long before, like a year before Nunslaughter, Nunslaughter wasn't playing or live or anything like that. I met Jim before just at the shows, talking to him and... Um, yeah, so it's like you don't you don't ever ask him to sign anything. So looking back at it, definitely regret it. Would have been not cool to have something signed, or um, or for sure a photo. So you have something signed that I don't. I like just like this day. I don't have any, I don't have anything signed by Don. Uh, kind of signed my XLP. I was not able to get Don or Craig to sign it, but I did take a set list off the stage. Oh yeah, Don and Craig, where they where they give you? The, did you ask them to sign? They gave you the middle finger. <laughs> I'm assuming you just didn't meet them. <laughs> Uh, a little over 90. Question. Do you think if Hell's Headbangers started about one to two decades earlier, you would have been, would have been able to be as big as labels like um, Metal Blade or Relapse Records became? Possibly, yeah. If we uh, knew how to uh, do the game before the internet. Because uh, you got to remember, like, when we started, yes, there was there was no social media and shit, but there was at least the internet. So as kids, we were able to figure that out. When we started Hell's Headbangers, we're, we're literally all kids. I mean, Eric might Eric was the oldest, but I don't even know if he was 18 yet. He might have been 18. Um, I was 15 or 16. Then Chase was in the middle of that. So would we have had the knowledge to, like, let's say it was 1990 or whatever, and however relapse and shit had to do it, like writing bands and putting out the paper catalogs and streaming shit? I don't know. That seems, because uh, realistically, that is harder to do. It, it, it just it is harder to do. Uh, that's why even nowadays, it's so much easier to start a fucking business. If, you, if you're really passionate about something and to just and you want to do a business, you easily can do it. The main thing you need to do is have the capital to do it. And anyone can do that. Just get a fucking McDonald's job. Work two jobs. Ordering afternoon. Do that for fucking five years straight. You'll do nothing for seven days a week. Work. Yeah, your life's going to suck for five years. You'll have money put away, even on a shitty McDonald's. I'll say you work at McDonald's in the, in the morning, Taco Bell in the evening. I'm just using the two lowest fucking 16-year-old kid jobs you can think of because that, that any job will work then. Do that, and if you're working seven days a week, two jobs a week, yeah, your life's going to fucking suck. You're doing nothing but working, but what's going to happen? Number one, you're going to have a lot more money coming in. Number two, you're going to be not spending any money because other than eating, eat, sleeping, and shitting, what are you going to be doing? Nothing. You're not going to be sitting around watching the fat ball game, wasting your money on fucking six-pack beers and shit like that. No, you're just going to be eating on the fly. Hell, if you work at those restaurants, if it was anything like me, uh, fucking, uh, you ate for fucking free. I mean, not on the J-Dog diet these days. <laughs> the fat motherfucker, but <laughs> worked when I was a teenager, got away with it. So, uh, I don't know, maybe if you're skinny and don't care, you can maybe get away with it. <laughs> but, uh, so basically, you're eating for free if you're able to do that. On top of that, Assuming you live on your own or whatever, you have an apartment, you have your rents and just your, your, your major major bills. You wouldn't be do, you wouldn't have time to do anything as long as you're getting. You wouldn't even have time to go to shows, so you're going to be spending way less money, too. Just let that capital build up, whatever you're really, really passionate about, 
open a fucking business. It's so fucking easy now with social media and shit. Look, there's 16 year old kids selling shit these days. Uh, it's because literally you just need a fucking Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. You can just start marketing shit. I mean, anyone can do it. The reason why most fucking fail is because they're lazy, dumb shits and they don't know how to fucking do anything consistently. They don't want to put in the work. They don't realize they think when, Oh, I'm going to start a YouTube channel or I'm going to start an Instagram or I'm going to start my little business that the, the chucks just roll in the blow jobs just keep on coming. No, it's all work. It's the same as a nine to five that you work for somebody else. You're just working for yourself. As a matter of fact, it's actually a little harder because you have to be held accountable by yourself. You have to self-motivate yourself when you don't feel like fucking doing it. So you see, I just do these videos for fun, right? I do a video every day, seven days a week. That's called being consistent. That's called being a hustler. That's called being fucking a, a hustler in a sense if, if you're trying to do it as a business because you're trying to just, let's say you're trying to be a YouTuber. These guys that are trying to, these kids, they're not even doing that. I mean, some are the successful ones. So let's just say you're watching. So you want to, you want to do nothing but YouTube and make a living. By the way, I made one fucking penny off this goddamn thing yet again. So whatever. It's just, I don't do this for money, but let's just say you were, you wanted to monetize it. You maybe you wanted to get sponsored for your channel. That was your goal. And you're getting up to a fucking million subscribers. You better be doing a fucking video every day. But a lot of these guys, that's their plan. No names mentioned to some people I know too. Go to do a YouTube channel, do this. They're doing a video one a week, one a month. What the fuck, dude? That's Slack Fuck Central. So basically you're telling me I you go to work once a week. You go to work once a month. No, motherfucker. You should, honestly, if that was your goal to be, uh, like just using YouTube as an example. If that was your goal to be a YouTuber full time, I'd say you should be doing two to three videos a day. 6 a.m. one goes up, one goes up at, uh, let's say, 1 o'clock, and one goes up at 8 p.m. I'd be just flooding that shit. Well, what else are you doing? That's your job. Bah, bah. The fuck else are you doing all goddamn day? So these slack-ass fucking motherfuckers, I do a video a week, three videos a week. Get, 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 get the fuck out of town, brah, brah. So uh, that's just it. You got to be consistent and uh, be willing to do the fucking work. Just because it's self-employed, you want to do your own business, and it's something you're passionate about. It still work like a motherfucker. I love when people want to come to Hell's Headbangers. Oh, because Hell's Headbangers hire shit. They think it's like, I'm not even joking, dude. They think it's fucking nothing but rainbows and blowjobs, fucking getting goddamn pizza party, having beers, sitting back, feet up on an office desk, listening to demos all day, just approving demo tapes. Who we signing? It is not even close to that. Nothing like that whatsoever going on. It's manual fucking labor. If you're doing any of the receiving or packing or anything like that, you're literally on your feet 20, eight hours a day, literally on your feet the entire fucking time. Nothing but laborers job. It's, it's the same as whatever factory job you're working at you hate, except you're around records and CDs and t-shirts and shit. That's the only goddamn difference. And J-Dog puts some tunes on in the background. And if I'm not in there and if you want to put something on, go ahead. Play some. That's, that's the whole, that, there's your perk. There's your metal perk. That's it. <laughs> Other than that, it's strictly work. Loading heavy ass fucking LP boxes up and down a ladder. For storage like that, like like physical labor. At times you can be sweaty as a motherfucker. So it's not like I just laugh because I know that's what they're fucking thinking. That's just so awesome. No, you're just around awesome shit. It's just nothing but work. My day is like my day to day of what you see me do for work or something is very similar to whatever you're doing at your nine to five. Very, very similar. It's not that it's just I don't have somebody breathing over my shoulder. I have to self motivate myself and, uh, just keep myself accountable to not to become a lazy fuck. You know what I mean? Because it's very easy to fall into that fucking um, trap if you don't have anybody holding you accountable. You know what I mean? So, anyways, that's it for this one, Devils. Cops, questions, search. You know what the fuck to do? Put them in the goddamn comment box. I get an answer breaker in the morning. Later, goddamn it.